Hello everyone, my name is Stacy, and in today's video I'd like to tell you what is 100 days of code, why I read it, and what were the challenges. The first time I did this challenge, I had zero experience in programming. By that time, I used to work with 3D animations and graphics. I heard about 100 days of code from my friend, and because I always wanted to learn how to code, I thought I'd give it a try. So 100 days of code meant I'd need to program for 100 days on weekends, holidays, and friends' birthdays. <coughs> Fun enough, right? So one morning I woke up and decided that it was a day. I made myself some tea and started looking for free online resources I could use. I didn't want to spend money on programming courses straight away, so I started looking online. Fortunately, I was able to find many amazing courses for free, but this would be a topic for my next video. So, I had a personal laptop that I was using for my job that efficiently handles simple coding tasks I was doing by that time. I also hope that one day I'll be able to switch careers to software engineering, so I was very motivated. My first week went smoothly and I was learning a lot. I don't think that by that point I understood everything I was doing. But what I saw was pretty cool. I understood that I can create with coding and build logic around things, and that was astonishing. However, after a while, I noticed that motivation wasn't enough to make myself study every day. The material I've been learning became more and more difficult, it was also harder to wake up for this, and I was almost ready to give up. It felt like I needed a break from coding, and I just got enough. I was able to complete the challenge, but I wouldn't be able if I didn't find my why. Simon Sinek inspires the idea, find your why, is an actionable guide to discover your mission in life, figure out how you can live it daily, and share it with the world. I didn't need to discover my mission, but I had to step back to the motivation. I wouldn't be able to resist longer than a week if I didn't identify my goal and the motivation behind it. So now we are getting to the critical point of this story. Because I wanted to switch careers, I was able to get back to books every day. It was my important why. And even when I felt down or frustrated that nothing worked, I was able to continue. I knew that switching jobs would allow me to have a different lifestyle, the one I wanted, with more free time and more flexibility. So understanding the motivation behind 100 days of code helped me to stay consistent. I started to plan my time for coding, and I was also able to free up some hours for myself. By setting a clear goal of switching careers, I knew why I was doing it, why I was coding instead of watching TV. After completing the challenge, my objective became even stronger, and I decided to dedicate all my time to coding. I did this challenge twice before I found my first freelance coding job. It was a job with small projects and little pay, but I was pleased and grateful for that. I knew that to launch my dream job at a bigger company, I'd need to have more experience, knowledge, and practice. After working as a freelancer for a while, continuing interview failures and uh, improving, I was able to land a full-time job as a software engineer. I never thought that 100 days of code could bring me that far. In the following video, I'll discuss what free online resources I used to land my first development job. So hit the subscribe button and see you soon.